Hi, this is Dale Buchanan, the host of Puppy Talk Podcast. Before we get started today, I wanted to let you know of my new book, The Complete Puppy Training Manual. It's available on Amazon in four formats Kindle ebook, paperback, hardcover, and audiobook. You can find it on Amazon right now. It's called The Complete Puppy Training Manual, and I will put a link in the show notes of this episode. I'm Dale Buchanan, and this is Puppy Talk, the podcast that offers advice on how to raise a happy, healthy, and obedient puppy. For more training tips, visit our website at puppytalkpodcast.com. Welcome to Puppy Talk, episode number 47. In episode 46, I talked about the technique leave it, the leave it command, and this time I'm going to discuss the drop it command. Now, a lot of times these two techniques are used in conjunction with each other. Let me explain. Let's say you're out back and you're throwing the ball to your dog and they go and get it. They bring it back and you say, drop it. And they've already learned drop it. And they do let it go. They let it out of their mouth and drop it on the ground. When you go to get the ball, they go back and try to grab it while you're trying to grab it. And there's a competition. That's when you can use leave it right after drop it. Let's get into how to do drop it. And then you can go back and listen to my last episode about leave it so you can put it all together. There's a couple of things that you don't want to do when you're teaching drop it to your puppy. One, you don't want to repeat the command. As I always say in every episode, do not repeat commands. Number two, You do not want to grab the object out of their mouth when they bring it back to you or when they have something that you don't want them to have in their mouth. You want to make sure that you don't get into a game of tug and war with them. The tug is not a good idea for a very young puppy to learn. It's okay later on, but you don't want to teach your puppy tug initially at 8, 12, 16, 20 weeks old. Wait for later when they have more obedience and then you can control the tug game. We'll get into that in another episode. Here's how you want to do this. You first want to have an object that they love in their mouth. Let's say they like to fetch a toy or they like to fetch a ball. You're going to say the words drop it and the puppy should be looking at you and paying attention to you, wondering what it is that you're telling them to do. The next thing you're going to do is just wait. You're going to wait for the puppy to let it go. Do not chase the puppy. Do not grab for the object. Do not even move. Just say, drop it. You can put your hand underneath the object so they drop it in your hand if you want. Do not do anything else. Do not move. Do not say another command. Just wait. Be very patient. And then when they do drop it, you reward them with a high-value treat. You can use the high-value treats or food rewards initially And then after a short period of time, you do not need the high-value food rewards. You don't need them at all. All you need to do is just praise them. Good girl, good boy. I'm going to put a link in this episode of a video that I did on TikTok. That's one of our best videos for Top Gun dog training. In this video, I show my dog Dixie fetching a ball, bringing it back to the couch. I say, drop it. She puts it right in my hand after about five seconds. A lot of people on TikTok got very confused by this because it's a very zen, simple technique. This is not rocket science. You don't want to overcomplicate the drop it technique. You don't want to grab for the ball. You don't want to repeat commands. You don't want to get frustrated. You definitely don't want to get upset and angry if they don't drop it. You have to learn to be patient and calm. And the dog wants to play the game again. The dog wants you to fetch, throw the ball so they can fetch again. That's what they want. That's their reward. They want that. So when you allow yourself to be patient and then they learn over 5 or 10 or even 15 seconds that the only way they're going to have you throw that ball again so they can go get it and bring it back, which is what they want to do, the only way they're going to be able to do that is if they let that ball go from their mouth. And you just have to trust the process. 
So what I did was I put this video on TikTok probably over a year ago. And then people started commenting, oh, this doesn't work. This will never work. My dog doesn't do it. And then when somebody commented, I posted another video in reply to somebody's comment. And I demonstrated it again. And I even said, don't overcomplicate this. You really have to just trust the process, follow what I'm doing here, and practice. And I do this every single day with Dixie. I play ball with her, and she drops it right in my hand every single day, and she's two years old now. This is very, very good mental stimulation training for your puppy or adult dog. And if you have a yard, you're out back, and you're playing fetch with them, this is just amazing how when they start bringing it back to you, they automatically drop it right at your feet. And then you could say, leave it, so they don't get it and grab it, and eventually you won't even have to say, leave it. They're going to bring it back, drop it. They know the only way they're going to continue this game is if you have the ball so you can throw it. And so they drop it, and then they wait for you to throw it again. In fact, if a dog has done this enough, they're going to bring it back to you, drop it at your feet, and start running the other direction, knowing that you're going to pick the ball up and throw it again. And they're already halfway down the other end of the yard. I did this for 12 years with my dog Spalding, who died in April of 2020. I've done this with Dixie, and I've done this with tons and tons of puppies that I've trained. And the owners say, well, my dog doesn't drop it. Well, let's go out back. Throw the ball, bring it back. It brings it back to me. I say drop or drop it, and I wait. And all of a sudden, after a short while, the puppy drops it. And they say, how come I couldn't do that? I could never get my dog to drop it because they're grabbing for the ball. They're grabbing for it, and then they get into tug, and then you get into a play. And remember that when you're doing fetch, it's, it's play, it's enrichment, but it's also discipline and obedience. So they have to follow the rules. They get the ball, they bring it back, they let it go. You grab it, you throw it, they get the ball, they bring it back, they let it go. Those are the rules. If the puppy or dog doesn't play by the rules, then the game is over. And that's what we're going to get into when I start talking about tug, how to play tug with your puppy properly. And that'll be a few episodes down the road. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to watch the video that I posted on TikTok. If you have any questions, let me know. You can email me through the website, puppytalkpodcast.com. You can also find a link to donate to the podcast and even schedule a 30-minute consultation with me through the link on puppytalkpodcast.com, which is buy me a coffee. Have a great day. This is Dale Buchanan, host of Puppy Talk Podcast. I have an announcement of a new book that I just published called Potty Training Your Puppy. It's available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback, soon to be available on audiobook. You can find out all the details of this book using the link in the show notes. It's called Potty Training Your Puppy. It's a comprehensive book with a simple and effective way to help potty train your puppy, and it really works. Check out the link in the show notes.